Today I'd like to talk to you about how Roman Catholicism uses both the systems of fascism and communism to control the masses. A lot of people think that these two systems are contrary the one to the other, and they on paper seem to be, but if you actually look at it, you realize that it's actually controlled by the same system. And I will be proving that today. If you're familiar with this symbol right here, the symbol of the cross, which the Catholics are very uh, much into doing, and you have to remember that Jesus Christ was not crucified on a Christian cross. He was crucified by pagan Romans on a pagan cross. Okay? That's very important. Now, there are Christians out there that will have a cross in their home or they'll make a little wooden cross or whatever else. I've had been contacted many times by people saying, should I have a cross in my home? Well, if you're having it as some kind of a satanic symbol or something, well, then no. But if it's just there as a reminder what Jesus died, you know, that Jesus died on the cross and that you're, you know, as his disciple, you're to take up your cross daily and follow him. You're to crucify your flesh. Okay, fine. Um, if it's not an idol, then okay, not a problem. But the Roman Catholic Church is, a, is not some kind of another denomination that's out there, another kind of church. They are a world government power. The Roman Empire, the two legs of iron in the book of Daniel, they never went away. Gold became silver, silver became brass, iron, you know, Brass became iron, and then after that, iron became iron and miry clay. It didn't go away like the other kingdoms did. We are not waiting for the fifth kingdom, you know, in Daniel, the book of Daniel, the, the five kingdoms that are prophesied, that Nebuchadnezzar has the dream, and then Daniel interprets the dream. You can study that. We're not waiting for the fifth kingdom. We are in the fifth kingdom. There's no break there. It doesn't say, well, the, the, the Roman Empire crumbles and just dissolves and then thousands of years go by and the fifth kingdom shows up. No, the fifth kingdom, we're in it. Okay, don't let prophecy teachers mess you up on that, that there's a, going to be a fifth kingdom someday. And, oh, no, no, it's here right now. It has been since the basically the fourth century or so when Roman Catholicism merged and became, or excuse me, when the Roman Empire became the, the two separate parts of the kingdom and then became the Catholic Church. But they have been using this system for centuries. Okay, very important to understand this. And uh, again, if you study anything about Catholicism, they teach that they have spiritual and temporal power, uh, symbolized by two swords. Okay, they also have two keys, which you know they get into the thing of the keys of death and, and hell and heaven and hell and whatever else. But they they're into this thing of they believe that they have the the Pope in Rome believes he has power over all religion and also over all governments, spiritual and temporal. All right, now I'm going to show you how the whole system breaks down as we continue here. We're going to start out first with communism, symbolized here by the purple. All right, again, the colors of Mystery Babylon is purple and scarlet. So we'll start out here with the spiritual, with communism. How does Roman Catholicism use communism? How do they employ it out there with the masses? Well, first of all, they use monastic orders, right? You're a Catholic, you're a faithful Catholic, and you want to serve the church. What do you do? Well, you can apply for uh, being a monk, a Franciscan friar, a um, Dominican. Uh, you, you, there's different types of Augustinian. There's different types of, of monastic orders that you can go in. Uh, if you're a woman, you can join a convent, become a nun. Uh, the Jesuits are another one of the monastic orders. They're the military, uh, sort of the scheming and whatever else type of a monastic order. Early on, though, they, they would fall under this whole thing. There are people that are Jesuit trained, and they get out there, and they have a, basically a secular life. They're not living at some kind of a monastery or whatever else and whatever. But when you first go into this monastic orders, um, you have to do certain things. You say, like what? Take certain vows. Vows of chastity. You don't go out and fornicate and whatever else. Vow of poverty. You give up whatever money you have to enter into that order. Vow of obedience. You will do what your superiors tell you to do. You know, those are the main ones. Uh, and that's what they do. Well, what is that? 
It's communal living, communism. Think about it. You have some guy that was raised in a trailer park and he doesn't have two nickels to, to rub together. And you have some guy that was raised in, you know, some Wall Street banker was his father and, and he's got all kinds of money and everything else. They both want to join a monastic order. Guess what? They're coming in at the same level. They are. They're going to have to give up their money. They're going to have to give up their, you know, ambitions and whatever else. And they will have to submit to their rules and the authority of it. That's what they do. It's communism. And think about what else they do. They all wear the same uniform. They all live together. They all eat together. They all make the same pay. You see? You say, that sounds kind of like something else, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know, like uh, the military? Hmm. You say, what? well, there, there are generals that can... Yeah, I know, and there are high-level Jesuits, and there's others and whatever else that they get away from that early monastic type of system, but... When you enter into it, what do you have? Uniform. They even cut your hair the same. Communal living. You all live at the barracks there. And you're under orders. Sounds kind of like up here, doesn't it? Hmm. And what are these people doing? They're there for the service of the church, aren't they? What are these people doing? Hey, just want to thank you for your service. To God and country. Who is their God? Mm -hmm. God and country. You know what I mean? Spiritual, temporal. Hmm. I mean, I'm joining the military to serve God and country. Okay, what are you going to do? Pass out gospel tracts? Go out and preach the gospel? Going to print Bibles and give them out? No. <laughs> How are you serving God when you join the military? We're going to go fight police action in far, actions in foreign countries and, and beat down communism. We're going to beat communism by practicing communism. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, think, you know. I mean, it, knock a few times and if nobody answers up there, you might want to, you know. <laughs> Socialism. You know. It's just so, capitalism is so bad and it's just so terrible and, and, and there's monopolizing and whatever else. And, and, and you know, these, these capitalists are so greedy and whatever else. Well, yeah, there's, you know, some of that stuff over here uh, on the fascist side. Um, but that doesn't mean that people shouldn't be able to make money on their own and shouldn't be able to have their own business and shouldn't be able to take care of their own life. But see, the socialist comes along and they say, um, the workers need to unite. Let's come together. The workers unite. We have the hammer and sickle down here. See? The sickle, the farmer, the hammer, the factory worker. Let's let's unite. Let's come together. Let's 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 you know have a social socialist country where we all work in factories. You say, well, yeah, but the farmers, the farmers aren't working in factories. Got you there, Brian. Uh, well, if you understand what big ag is, um, it's essentially a factory. Okay? Uh, well, I'm a vegetarian. I don't go with the, the farmed, you know, the, the factories where they put in these cows and they, they milk them with machines and, you know, just herd hundreds of them through there and, and they just milk them until the cow drops dead, you know, taking far more out of them than their bodies can barely even handle. And, and it's, I, I'm a vegetarian. I don't, okay, what about your vegetables? What about the fruits that come from Central America? I've seen the banana pl plantations in person that Dole and Chiquita run down in Honduras and Costa Rica. I was, I was there. I've seen how it's an oligarchy down there and they pay the people just barely any money. I've seen it. I've seen the pineapples and the bananas and the big plantations and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't tell me it's not a factory. A factory doesn't have to have four walls, okay? It can have uh, four borders of a field, too, <laughs> if I can say it that way. Um, factory workers, you're out there you know, sitting at the sewing machine making the communist Chinese, you know, again, communist. See, China. Who do you think set that up? I won't, uh, won't tell you. You just have to figure it out on your own, you know. But um, they're in there in the factories. They've got the women working at the, the sewing machines, just sewing shirts for the capitalists over here and the, the fascists. And, um, you know, we're going to make the little toys that we can sell at Walmart and whatever else. And, and, um, well, that, yeah, I can see that that's communism, but 
not the fields. Oh, you mean the people that are out there bent over in the hot sun and they're, they're you know, working in the fields, working in the heat, getting things for the global market? Yeah. How about universal basic income? There are people that are calling for that right now. Hey, we can't work anymore because of the baloney virus. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's kind of killed, but not really killed, but sort of killed a lot of people. So we have to shut down the economy and people couldn't pay their rent and they couldn't pay their mortgages. So we need to have universal basic income. We shouldn't have to pay for our housing anymore. That's bad. We shouldn't have to pay rent or mortgage. That's a terrible thing. Common housing? Hmm. Oh, it's, it's brand new. This, this, this pandemic has caused some new things. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. They're just trying to bring in communism through socialism. Why would you be against these things? There's people that are hurting. There's a lot of people died. There's people that might be out on the streets unless we do something to step in and, and make it that they don't have to work anymore. Social justice. We need social justice. This is wrong. This fascist system over here with the capitalism and everything else, they've come in and they charge too much for rent. And they charge the housing prices are inflated and, 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 and there's all this money out there and, and, and debt and everything else. And we need to get rid of that and just make everybody live the same. You see how it works? Hmm. So there's this system. Communism, the left arm of the cross of Catholicism. Now let's talk about the right wing. You say, well, uh, what's the symbol of fascism? The symbol of fascism is the swastika. No, actually, if you study what the swastika is, it was an ancient sort of an Indian Hindu type of a uh, symbol for good luck, essentially. <laughs> That's all it is. Uh, the Nazis just took it. The Nazis did some really weird, bizarre stuff, and they took a lot of things from the Orient and from kind of like the Tibet uh, area and, and whatever else, and they took some Hinduism. And The Nazis were occultists. You know what I mean? Um, they were occultists, and they controlled through occult you know, means and whatever else, just like you know, people do today um, in a lot of these governments. Um, no, the, the symbol for fascism is right there, a fasci. A Roman fasci, an axe that's controlling all the little sticks that are bound together. We're all in this together. <laughs> Did you ever hear that one? You know, uh, yeah, fascism. And you say, well, I, I think I've seen that before. Well, if you look at an old mercury dime here in America, it was on the back of the mercury dime. A Roman fasci. If you look at the... Uh, uh, what is it, the Senate, I guess, or something else there, you know, um, in Washington, D.C.? Two Roman fasci on either side. Huh. And you look at uh, Nazi Germany, pictures of it, there's fasci. American soldiers put with bulldozers and things pulling them down and whatever else. Why, why'd they pull them down? We have them in our nation's capital. You drive around and things, and there's, there's different clubs, different uh, do-gooder organizations, it's, it's not the rotary. I forget what the one is, but they, they, uh, they have fasci as their symbol. Look at it. When you come into a town, you'll see some of the different ones like the Masonic Lodge or the Rotary Club or the Lions Club or whatever else. And um, they're all fraternal organizations. And some of them have fasci. It's fascism. So what is fascism? Well, fascism, fascism is... Everybody's bound together with the same common cause, and they're held together with the state. The state controls you. Sounds kind of like communism again, but, you know, we won't go there. But you have six different basic groups in fascism. First off, first off you have Catholic Church members. See, they don't have to give up everything. They don't have to take vows of poverty and whatever else. They can use capitalism to make lots of money that gets funneled back to the church for uh, different purposes, if you know what I mean. So the Catholic Church members, hey, son, daughter, you're a faithful Catholic. Um, your sister here, she's decided to, to dedicate herself to the service of the church as a holy nun. She's going to enter the convent. She's going to give up marriage and children and, and you know, whatever else. Uh, 
and so she can work in the employ of the church. Um, but Jimmy here, he's actually going to be going off to Yale so he can be a big businessman and he can make lots of money to funnel it back into the church again. We're all bound together, you see. See how that works? Secondly, you have Catholic knighthoods, and that gets you into government positions. Knights of Columbus, Knights of Malta, Knights of the Equestrian Order, name it. Freemasonry, let's just, let's just cut through all the little propaganda and whatever else. Freemasonry is just another Catholic knighthood. Okay? Uh, no, it's Protestants. That, Protestants are the ones that are in, the, in, in Freemasonry. And if you're a Catholic, you can't be a, a Freemason. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it's, you know, sororities, fraternities, all that stuff. It all goes back to Catholic knighthoods. You know, the orders and what ain't orders of St. Gregory the Great, an order of this, an order of that, you know. And what's it do? It gets you into the government positions. You know the right little handshakes, you know the right little words to say. You go to the parties where the different higher level guys say, and they say, Hey, Jimmy, come on over here. Hey, Ted and John, this is Jimmy. I'd like to introduce you. You know his dad. Yeah, he's you know big guy. And uh, I see Jimmy going places here. Let's get him into the right positions. Do you ever think about getting into government, Jimmy? I've heard you speak. You'd be pretty good at It's who you know, you know. Catholic intelligence agencies, number three. Again, are they really taking vows of poverty and whatever else? No, it's somewhat close to the military, but you get these guys in the intelligence agencies. You're not quite, you know, you get into human and SIGINT and all this other stuff. It's not quite the same as being active duty military. You can get some civilians into that whole thing. There's money, there's financial incentives. It's not that you're taking a vow of poverty or living monastically in a communal setup. Um, you know, and the CIA guys, of course. Uh, CIA, a lot of times, goes and bosses around the military, you know. Uh, CIA, been proven over the years to work with the mafia. Um, you know, and, and what, is it, what is the mafia, by the way? It's a Catholic intelligence agency. Funny, Catholic intelligence agency, CIA. Yeah. Nothing to it. Um, but you have these different organizations, the FBI, the DEA, the, I mean, name any of the little alphabet organizations out there with all the little letters and stuff that go back to it. But again, it's part of the fascist system. They're all in this together. You see? How about the uh, number four? Catholic medical inquisitors. You say, now, come on. My doctor's a good man or woman or whatever. Uh, my doctor's good. They, they've helped me. They've, they've got me, made me better different times. Really? Uh, how do they do that? Well, you go into their office and, uh, uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Smith, come in. It's your time to see the doctor. They come in and you sit down and the nurse says, uh, okay, so uh, what's, you know, what seems to be the problem? Well, I'm having some headache. Oh, okay, some headache. Uh, what else? Uh, have you, do you have any history of smoking, by the way? Well, yeah, I, I did a little bit. Okay. What, what's she doing? Is she making in inquisitions? Is she inquisitive? Asking you questions? Hey, uh, doctor, yeah, I, I, uh, I fornicate like a fiend and I drink like a sailor and I, and a, a, well, drink like a fish or something, cuss like a sailor. Uh, I do all these different things and I've, I've gotten into fights and whatever else and I'm actually in here right now with this knife wound in my side because I got in, you know, bad fight and I had to kill some guy last night, whatever else. What's the medical doctor going to do? after hearing your uh, confession, uh, is he going to call the police on you? Yes. Hey, um, uh, doctor, I just don't know if I can take life anymore. I, I think I'm just going to blow my brains out, doctor. What's the doctor going to do? He's going to turn you into the authorities. Hey, um, doctor, uh, I don't believe in vaccinating my children. I'm not about to vaccinate. That's not going to happen. I'm raising, between you and me, doctor, I'm raising my children without medical, what's he going to do? Going to turn you in. 
Don't tell me that doctors and nurses are not part of an inquisition. They are. Um, do you ever hear of the order of the hospitallers? Roman Catholic order? That's where the uh, hospital concept came from? Huh. Uh, do you know what the original word doctor means? It means a um, church father. Look it up. Hmm. Oh, well, that's just a PhD. That's a, uh, keep telling yourself that. Catholic medical inquisitors. Um, we have a heretic here. Um, you have some very dangerous beliefs there, Mr. Denlinger. I think that you should go to one of our psychiatrists. I think that you're, um, you have some, uh, what do they call it, uh, you know, personality problems or, or uh, bi you're bipolar. I was thinking polar something, but you know, <laughs> you're bipolar, you know. You, you have some sort of a problem here, Mr. Denlinger, and I think that, uh, I think you actually need some medication. Because you see, um, heretic, uh, <clears throat> instead of taking you down to the basement of the Catholic Church and to the dungeon to torture you, no, actually, we'll just torture you with our bottle of pills. And if we can't change your mind there, well, well we might have to just up the torture. I mean, a prescription. Uh, we'll try a few other pills to try and straighten you out mentally. And if that doesn't work, we'll just keep on doing it until you die. See, no, no. Now, come on. I think you're taking this a little too far. Am I? Am I? Personally knew of a man and went to a Methodist church and he died because of complications of medication, <laughs> not coronavirus, it was years ago. You know how many, any, how many prescription drugs he was on? 75. 75 prescription drugs, most of which were to counteract the uh, known effects of other drugs. And he eventually died. Nice man, I met him, falling apart. Why? Because he was going to the Catholic medical inquisitors. Hmm. You say, but, but, okay, if what you're saying is true, I mean, there's doctors that are good people. They would come out, they would tell the truth. They can't. You know why? They're bound together under the authority. Hey, are you kidding me, man? If I come out and tell the truth about the vaccines, if I come out and tell the truth about big pharma and whatever else, you know what's going to happen to me? I'm going to get the ax. Hmm. Isn't that something? My career will get the ax. I will get the ax. Why? Because they're bound together. Fascism. How about Catholic propagandists? Uh, Hollywood, news media. You know, we're going to tell you what the news is. You know, it's kind of funny because uh, the... Athenians, you know, in the book of Acts, chapter 17, what did they do? Spent their time in nothing else but to hear or tell some new thing. New, as in news. Nothing to it, nothing to it. Um, Paul says to him, in all things, you're too superstitious. Bears nothing in common with the uh, modern news media people. They're not superstitious at all. Yeah. <laughs> what do they do? They come out and they are bound together. I have to do what my boss tells me to do. I don't want my career to get, career to get the ax. And we ultimately have to do what the Roman Catholic Church does and tells us to do. Hmm. How about the Catholic clergy? You say, well, aren't they over here? Well, somewhat early on, I would say some of the Catholic clergy are, you know, kind of a little bit monastic be they Protestant or actually Catholic. Um, most of them are, you know, if you're in a church building, you're pretty much Catholic clergy in my opinion. But uh, what do they have? Well, early on, maybe in seminary or in Bible college or whatever else, maybe you have communal living or, you know, kind of the vow of poverty type of a thing till you go through your training, uh, mind control programming. And then you come out and now you're officially a, a pastor and you can really preach it good and you can really grow the thing and whatever else, get your career up and whatever. So it's more, it's not so much 
communism anymore. Now it's more capitalistic fascism over here. Uh, you can really build your empire as Catholic clergy. But again, uh, how many preachers have I heard that they hear about another preacher, another clergyman that's involved in scandals, and they say, hey, what he's doing is none of my business. I can't talk about that. You know, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to. Why? Why? I'm an independent fundamental Baptist. I'm independent. Nobody tells me what to do. What about Brother so, -and -so? I, I can't talk about it. Are you independent? <laughs> no, you're bound together by a much stronger tie to this fraternity. Do you understand? It's fascism. It's fascism. <laughs> it's why you go from one church to another and they're all teaching the same things. Slightly vari variations and whatever else. But, uh, and if you come out as a preacher and you go against the system, the fascist system, you know what they do? They blackball you. It starts, the word gets around, yeah, Denlinger's a heretic, Denlinger's a heretic. You yeah, pass the word, Denlinger's a heretic. He's a nut. I have literally had young people write me and say they were going to independent fundamental Baptist churches and the pastor told their parents, your child is not allowed to watch Brian Denlinger because Brian Denlinger is a heretic. I kid you not. I kid you not. I have literally had teenagers say, I am no longer allowed to watch you because my Baptist pastor controls my family. What is that? Fascism. It's what it is. There's no other, no other way to look at that. But let me show you what the scriptures have to say about this thing of communism versus fascism and show you that it is Roman Catholicism that controls both. Let's go to Revelation 18. Revelation 17 and Revelation 18 are the two chapters that best describe Roman Catholicism. Let's look at this. Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. This is when Roman Catholicism finally gets destroyed. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Who's the her? Holy Mother Church. For no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thion wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Now hold on there. People say, well, wait a second. That can't be communism. It has to be, you know, capitalism and stuff. There's, they're, they're making all this stuff. They're making all this money. Last time I checked, I think China, you know, uh, <clears throat> communist China, I think that they're making a lot of things and making a lot of money. Hmm. And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves. Slaves. You get it? And souls of men. You want to see what Mystery Babylon is? This is it right here. This mess right here. Here are your slaves that serve these people. What do they say? What do they say? Hey, thank you for your service. Oh, it's so nice that you've given up things and whatever else to serve the greater good for the greater glory of God. You see what I mean? But we'll finish up here, Romans chapter 13. And I could do a whole study on what is the Christian system that we should have as Bible-believing Christians. What is the right kind of governmental system? But I'm going to show you right here just a very simple, basic understanding of what it should look like. Romans chapter 13, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. You say, I think that the true biblical Christianity should be one of anarchy. Well, then you have a real problem with Romans 13. Romans 13 is saying there should be higher powers. There should be people put into positions by God. 
But what are they there for? Are they there to control the masses through fascism? With the fear of being getting the axe if you do something wrong and everybody's bound together? Is that it? Or is it over here that they control the masses through making them slaves? And give you no incentive to work harder because you just get the same pay if you work hard or you don't work at all? No. What are the rulers there for? Verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Rulers are put into positions where they can protect the people. They can enforce certain laws and say, hey, you know, don't steal. Don't, you know, follow the Ten Commandments here, you know. As far as, uh, you know, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Honor thy father and mother, you know, do, do those types of things. We'll, we'll be here to rule over things and make sure that people aren't robbing banks or, or doing other kind of wicked things, trying to kill people and whatever. That's what they're there for. And when you do good, these rulers will praise you. Unlike this, you know, whole pandemic thing, uh, I want to go to work. You're not allowed to. Uh, can I go for a walk in the park? No, sorry. It's been quarantined off or, you know, you're quarantined off of the property that's, you know, whatever. And you have to wear a face mask when you go. That's a terror to good works. Okay, that's corrupt leadership. Verse 4, for he is the minister of God to thee for good but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. I mean, why don't you want to do good? You know, you get these Christians, I think anarchy is the way. Really? Why are you afraid of a governmental power, a governmental authority over you, trying to maintain law and order? We shouldn't have law and order. We shouldn't have police or we shouldn't have this or that. It's kind of weird. Why? Do you want to rob banks and kill people? <laughs> uh, that's a problem. Well, we can just trust everybody. Everybody will do right. Uh, no. <laughs> there needs to be governmental power there that they can enforce laws. But that doesn't mean that they control you through fascism or through socialism over here. They don't control every micromanage every little thing that you do. That's the issue here, all right? Um, you get a bunch of Christians together and you say, okay, we're going to plunk these Christians on this land over here or something. Um, somebody needs to, to be in charge there. Somebody needs to kind of run things and say, hey, okay, I have kind of the leadership qualities here or whatever else. Uh, Lord put me in a position of authority where that I can watch over everybody and see and, and kind of are, you know, settle disputes and whatever else, kind of like King David in the Old Testament. Um, that's fine. That's the way it can be. But let's continue. Uh, verse 6, For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Um, you get an older man and you say, hey, this guy here, he knows the Bible very well. You preach the Word of God to us. You teach the younger men. That's there in Scripture. Hey, this guy over here, he's uh, really good with, with business type of things and whatever else, and he could be the one that kind of keeps our, our little nation together here. And, uh, you know, I, I just all I want to do is just go out and cut firewood. All right? Can you take care of the other stuff, Mr. So-and-so, Brother So-and-so? Yeah, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of the business end of things, and I'll look and see how much uh, cloth do we need for the ladies to make the dresses and the, and the other clothes, and how much uh, food do we need for this, or how much that do we need, or how much of this. Or You get a guy that's set up to take care of that situation. And I'm going very small here, you know, in terms of talking about this. You know, with a nation, of course, it would be a much bigger job. Pay tribute to them. They're doing a work there. They're not controlling through fascism. All right? And they're not saying everybody gets the same pay and there's no incentive to work harder. All right? If any would not work, neither should he eat, the Bible says. Okay? Uh, how does that work over here? It doesn't. Universal basic income, you don't have to, you know, if you do a lousy job at the factory or whatever else, you still eat. 
you still have your housing. There's no incentive to work harder. That's a problem. Okay? Neither one of these systems can be made to line up with the Bible. Neither one of them. But look at verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. A true Bible-believing Christian system would be debt-free. Not, not uh, usury and things that the Bible condemns. And, and uh, you know, you go through the Old Testament, the Lord is saying, hey, go on in there and conquer those people, and then that land is now your inheritance. And the Lord made sure that they kept that inheritance, that there's always something there. There's always some physical assets there. The Lord didn't want people to ever get into debt because debt means control. You see? That's why uh, this system over here likes debt. They like to get people into debt the fascist system, so that then, hey, I just got out of medical school, I have this big uh, bill that I need to pay from my college, and uh, I can make good money as a doctor, but, um, or a dentist, or whatever, but I, I can't step out of line because, you know, I'm bound to this uh, fraternity here. <laughs> um, and then you go down through any of them, down through any of them there. This one over here, do they like debt? Oh, you better believe it. Um, the food on your plate now belongs to the state. <laughs> uh, there you go. Everything that you have, my clothes on my back, the food in my stomach, the bed that I lay on at night, the, the roof that's over me and whatever else, it's all owned by somebody else. I'm subservient. See? Owe no man anything. Doesn't work here. Owe no man anything. Doesn't work here. <laughs> You see how it works? Bible-believing Christianity is sort of a, yeah, I hate to even put any kind of economic titles on it, you know, free market, free trade, because everything just gets perverted by the devil, you know, and just moves it into this or moves it into that, and capitalism and it, uh, crony clap, capitalism, and it, 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 you know, whatever. The Bible system is you should be able to have a small government presence above you where they're not, you know, dictating everything that you do with your life, um, and you can work hard, and you the money that you make is based on the labor that you put in. That's what's supposed to be there. And you shouldn't have debt in that system because when you have debt, some rich banker comes in and says, I'm going to take your farm from you because now you didn't pay me off in time or whatever else. You, I lent you money and you didn't pay me back, so I'm going to take what you have. That's not there in the Old Testament. It's not anywhere at all in the Old Testament. Debt is a major problem. Um, like I said, that's, that's really kind of the glue that holds this whole system together here. Debt. These people here are all indebted to the system that they're part of, all indebted to the system of control that's above them. That's why they're bound together like sticks. These people here, they're in debt through communism, the communal system that they're in. And they're all in debt. They're all enslaved to Roman Catholicism. I mean, when you get right down to it, I don't care how powerful you think you are, if you're part of Roman Catholicism, you're a slave. You're the servant of sin. That's why Jesus said, uh, I'm trying to think of the verse. Let me actually go to it. I don't have this in my notes, so I just want to make, my brain is kind of all off on a lot of other things. Um, John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Um, it's funny because uh, one of the neatest things that you can achieve in this life is to be debt-free. Hmm. You know what you are if you're debt-free? You're not really part of this. You're free. And of course, you have to be saved. You know, you'd be born again if you're, if you're lost while well, you're still a servant of, of Satan, you're still one of his children. But uh, if you're saved and you aren't in debt, it's a great feeling of freedom. You should be debt free. Because if you are drowning in debt, then you are in here somewhere. Rather interesting. So that's basically going to cover it. I could talk for a lot longer on this subject. 
uh, studied it for many years. Um, I have plenty of Catholic books and Catholic resources where they talk about their their spiritual and, the, and their temporal power. You can look at the history of the Jesuits and see how they were involved in bringing in communism, which is their system. But then they also foment fascism, which is also their you know their thing that they use. Um, the Catholics, uh, Hitler bragged about how that uh, his uh, the SS in Germany was basically patterned after the Jesuit order. Fascism, but yet communism. <laughs> um, don't be deceived by this. Don't be deceived of, you know, you get the election type of thing and they say, what do you want, a fascist or a communist? Hmm. Well, what's the lesser of two evils? I have to pick one. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, two, the lesser of two evils is, is still an evil. You know, you don't have to pick one. You just say, no, Bible-believing Christian, sorry, I, re I reject both. I'm not a communist, socialist, I'm not a fascist. I'm not into the corrupt, uh, capitalistic, fascist, you know, corporate capitalism, you know, monopolies and business and whatever else. I'm not into that. Okay? That's the way you look at it. You say, I, I, I just want kind of not much government interference. I don't want to be in debt. So people can't, you know, control me. I owe no man anything. Uh, that's kind of where I want to go with this whole thing. So um, this nation right now, uh, today is the 9th of January. Probably by the time I get this study out, the whole inauguration bomb is going to be blown up and whatever else, whatever they're going to do. I don't know yet whether... Um, martial law is declared and Trump says I'm not stepping down or if they just simply go with this over here and they say, okay, we'll bring in left-wing communism and uh, to further destroy the morals of the American people or, or we'll bring in alt-right fascism. I have no idea what's going to happen. But understand, it's not two different systems, okay? These, you know, the churches out there, whether Catholic or Protestant or, you know, Baptist or whatever else, they have no, you know, they, they don't really talk about this whole thing. Um, they're, they're just going to say, oh, you know, we, we had the, the communists came in. We have communism. We should have had Trump come in. And then it would have been better. Uh, you're not understanding the system. Okay. Both systems are in debt to the same head up here. That's why, you know, it doesn't matter who gets into office, Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. The country still goes down. The country still gets more into debt. So ultimately, it really doesn't matter if Biden comes into the office or if Trump forces himself to stay in. Well, well who do you think really won the election, Brother Brian? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Here's who really won the election. Okay. Here's who really uh, is behind the whole thing. They just make you think that you have a choice. You don't, okay? Um, your only choice in life is to decide to serve Jesus Christ or the devil. That's really your only choice, okay? And by the way, let me just say this. If you are truly a servant of Jesus Christ and you are not in debt, you owe no man anything, all right? Uh, it doesn't really matter who's in power because you're not going to follow their anti-biblical dictates. I don't care. They come out and they say, well, you have to do such and such because we have the socialists in here now and whatever you can't preach the way that you preach, I'm, I'm going to preach the way that I preach. Well, over here, you can't, you can't uh, say certain things anymore. You can't speak against our Catholic propagandists or clergy or medical inquisitors, intelligence agencies, knighthoods, church members. You can't preach against that stuff. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. That's the simple way. You have to understand government is between you and God. All right. God is your authority. The Bible is what you submit to. That's how it works. So I do pray that you think about this. Uh, don't get sidetracked on this fighting between the, the right and the left, you know, and whatever. Right and the left. I didn't mean to point at myself. I'm not from the left. <laughs> Uh, no, not happening. Um, don't get sidetracked on it, okay? I see all these people fighting over, you know, the Trump and the election and all that. Whatever. It's a Catholic church. Focus 
on what we're supposed to fight as Bible believers. We're supposed to fight against the Roman Catholic Church, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Um, just think of it this way. I'll say this in conclusion. If you have a system whose clergy can rape children and the parents still remain faithful to it, you are talking about a system of bondage, a system that people need to get out of. That's why the Lord says in Revelation chapter 18, come out of her, my people. Come out of her. Get out of there. There are a lot of Catholics that are just firm in their ways. They're like this right here, that the communist fist, you know, they're just resolute. I'll be a Catholic. I was born Catholic and I'll die a Catholic. You have a lot of people like that, you know, born and bred to be a Baptist. <laughs> Not much hope for them. But you know what? There's people in there that are hurting. There are people that are victims of molestation at the hands of priests or nuns or monks or whatever else. There are people that are hurting. And uh, instead of you being involved in the politics of the day, how about you be involved in the saving of people, the witnessing to people? Have the guts to stand against Roman Catholicism and say, no, it's not Christ's church. Christ's church does not rape children. Christ's church is not involved in international politics. I mean, when did any man in the Bible ever have world leaders coming down and bowing before his feet? If the Pope is the head of Christ's church, uh, where's the biblical precedent? No man of God ever in the Bible, both Old and New Testament, ever had world leaders coming and bowing to him. Think about that. You're not dealing with the head of the church. You're dealing with the head of a, a, a huge government. You know, the, the man that controls the, the king of the earth, basically. You know, we need to witness to Catholics. We need to show them that their system is false. Don't get caught up in their little trap here behind me. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.